last for time, Jackson. last time we went trucking, you made me a sandwich. In this time, I've got get the hot dinner ready. For hey, me. ready? And here we come. Yeah. Not how me and Chris wanted to start the trip. <laughs> Not what we had in mind. This is the reality of modern motors these days. Codes, D rates, you can't trust them to go anywhere. I have, I don't have much love for new engines. They just, it's crazy. Yeah, you're free to run down the, it tells us three hours. You got three hours, you can run down the road and then we're gonna shut you down. Chris was able to get a hold of a 24 hour guy it's like 11 o'clock. We are in, what town are we in? Martinsburg. That's where we're at. Anyway, he's going to hook a computer up. Hoping we can get her squared away. I don't know. The problem is with these things, you can clear the codes, but you never know. You never know if they're just going to pop back up. Um, we got 500 miles still to go to get up to Loudoun. We're, by the way, we're headed to Loudoun, New Hampshire. So while we're sitting here waiting, look what comes. Old school, look at that. This is like sweet. Monte Carlo comes rolling up. The car is full of these hooligans. What's up? <laughs> Guys, what's okay. going on? What's your name? My name is Dylan Beavers. Dylan Beavers? Hello, Revelo. Okay. Nate Waldeck. Okay, so guys, we weren't here for like, I don't know, just a few seconds and you guys come rolling up. Yeah. Sir. You must be race fans? Oh, yeah. Okay, and you, uh, what do you do? I'm a dirt track race car driver at Hagerstown Speedway in Maryland. I drive a Monte Carlo street stock. So you're Monte Carlo through and through. Yep. Got Monte three of them. Race uh -huh. car and two street ones. Really? Yep. Okay. How old are you? I'm 17. 17. So you guys are still hope for teenagers. These guys are out racing. So you guys, watch these Watch these guys. This, these, you guys are the pit crew, you said. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And you're the driver. Yep. Tearing it up out here on the dirt. <laughs> Woo. Okay, we got a little clip. Check this out. My man out there on the dirt. That Monte Carlo. Look at that. Got a boy. Keep it up, guys. Yes, Daryl, no, no, this is good, Daryl. What? Just so you guys know, Daryl and Chris have officially buried the hatchet over this. Uh, the Sonoma. Yeah, the Sonoma being getting being left late. behind. Being yeah, late. being late. Yeah. Being I late. Tired. I thought I had one blowout, but I had. Two, once I got down to the garage at Love's and I done told Chris he could go on down the road. I, and then Troy I had two was driving. And asked him I to wasn't come back. driving, Troy was driving. <laughs> he got about 20 miles down the road. I said, okay, I need to come back and bring me another tire. Oh, uh, he'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. And we had to wait five hours to get a tire. <laughs> Dude, check out the service truck. This thing's dope. There ain't a lot of service trucks. Look at how spiky. <laughs> <laughs> got some good it's got some good white lights man good light good light is if you're a mechanic you you know good lighting good lighting so are you uh are you jt yeah you the man, the man. got a beard that's a good sign you guys <laughs> a bearded brother <laughs> what's up <laughs> so jt's come down here in the middle of the night pretty much rusted him out of bed he was dreaming about snap-on tools and all, <laughs> all that good stuff, right? And so, and so we tried, I bet we tried 10 different oh. places. Everyone's like, no, no, no. My man, JT, right here. You guys ever need him? Boom. So basically what it is, the code that it's throwing is a... Uh, there's a exhaust gas recirculation pressure sensor, EGR pressure sensor, and uh, that's what's throwing the code. 
So my man JT, who's turning out to be a great dude. Uh, I like when I when you run into a mechanic that like takes pride in what he does and likes it. Like he likes what he does. You run into a lot of mechanics and I, a lot of times you just feel like you are the biggest burden to them trying to get something fixed. You're like, I'm sorry, you know, and they, anyway. JT's great. Um, I'm, I'm gonna try to chat with him when he's done for a minute for you. He's vacuuming out the sensor, gonna clean it out. It needs to be cleaned more fully, but that's a big half day job to, to do it all. Uh, so he's gonna try to get it cleaned out enough that hopefully this sensor will work properly, get us up to New Hampshire, get us back to Charlotte so the truck can go in the shop and get the full cleanse for in the EGR system that it needs. So we're sitting here, uh, our man JT's getting this this truck, the regen done, and got I, I got some stuff cleaned out, cleared out, and we notice all of our battery voltage goes. See you later, little corn. So we get to digging around. Check this out. Yeah, that is our end that goes on our alternator. So just a little more fix it going on around here. Yeah. <laughs> EGR. I need like three people. Yeah, I All right, you guys, we got her done. It's all rip, rip, wrap, ready to roll. Uh, found a few unexpected things that we weren't looking for in that the uh, charge cable was coming off. So good to have that rolling. Hopefully this is clean enough now. This will get us up to New Hampshire, get us back. And then uh, Chris will put that thing in the shop where they can really take it all apart and give it a clean. All thanks to my man, Mr. JT. Yes, so dude, I gotta ask, it's so rare for me to find uh, mechanics, especially this time of night, yeah, that have a good attitude and are happy. Yeah. So, what's your key? It's just a lot of it's uh, what you're really in it for, you know. I think um, I take a lot of pride and passion in what I do, and check out lights and chromes, what I live for, buddy. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. When you really love what you do, it's it's easy to have a good yeah. attitude. You, know? you guys, JT was uh, super pleasant, very knowledgeable. Uh, great uh, doctor patient uh, <laughs> manner um, and and the real telltale sign with JT is the inside of his service truck is so organized and immaculate everything you'd open you're like huh so, you know it's not pickup bed full of just stuff thrown in <laughs> you know what I mean yeah oh, so yeah. so JT where if people are traveling through because we got a lot of people that watch the channel that run the, the eastern yeah. up and down here where are we at and how can they get a hold of you if they need? So right now we're right off exit 16 on 81 um, in Martinsburg, West Virginia. Okay. Um, and if you guys want to get a hold of me, it's 701-334-4280. All right. You guys heard it from the man. Dude, a big thanks. Yeah, man. Really appreciate you getting Thank us you. on the road. We'll yeah, see, we'll see you, you another time. Thank you. I got a lot of sleep through. There was a little bit of time where the roads felt real smooth. There was a window for about three hours where it was it just seemed like it. so smooth. And then I thought, man, Daryl has really finally figured this deal out. Right? <laughs> well, Chris's truck broke down, so we sat on the side of the road and waited on them to get fixed. And that's why it was so smooth. Hey, yeah, buddy. All right, y'all, night shift is over. The uh, The truck appears to be running well. No more codes. Uh, cautiously optimistic that we're gonna make it up to New Hampshire, race, flip around, and get on back 
down to Charlotte where they can put it in the shop and really give her the gale. So. Everybody, the stage is set. Here we are. Razorback came, got the van, getting her loaded up with the luggage. All these trucks are lined up clear down the way, down and around the corner. Today is Thursday. We come in off the road. First things first, as you saw, get everything cleaned up. Then Thursday, we park the trucks outside of the track, but on the complex, so that tomorrow morning we'll come, they'll do roll call, and they will call the trucks in in the order that they want them to come in, which changes from week to week, kind of depending on how your car is running and whatnot. They, they, they move you around a little bit. So tomorrow morning, we'll come in early, we'll get on the CB and they'll we'll park the trucks. You see that again, where we wheel everybody in and they're getting them lined up and straightened out. Really beautiful place here in New Hampshire. You guys have never been in New Hampshire before. It's my first time being this far in like the true Northeast. So thank you, New Hampshire. Those of you out there from the Hampshire of new appreciate you having me <laughs> so that's good we're gonna go find a whole lot of food somewhere to eat because my physique is wasting away <laughs> uh, we're gonna eat we're gonna shower up clean up uh, just get rested up and get ready for tomorrow it's all good I, need to go find a sandwich. <laughs> I was gonna say if he was gonna be a while and had to wash we could just grab JP and go eat a little hotel Five minutes out. Um, and the roads are rough coming up here. Pulling no more. <laughs> Until you drive home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the last three hundred ticks, or you call anybody at the shop. Our shop? Yeah. Yeah, they don't want to. Uh, so we had to come back to pick up a few more of the drivers. Hollywood is the only one that did not wash his truck here on site. So I'm like, Hollywood, how did you wash your truck? Cause we all got it washed here. So, and he tells me. So here's, here's the deal. I missed the exit and I was going to be last in line and that's not for me. So I pulled over at the, at the in town back there and I went in and found the manager. And you pulled into where, Walmart? Pulled into Walmart and I went in and found the manager and introduced myself. Of course he recognized me from from YouTube. Yep, from, from our YouTube, channel, yeah. from the channel. So you guys check that out, pretty cool. 
And he goes, my Lord, yeah, Hollywood, you can use anything we got here. So I went in, spent a little money there. Okay. And then come out and Daryl rents the whole time and I wash. Got a way better wash, so we feel good about it. Saved the company some money. And uh, and then I got extra stuff left over that I can use back at the shop. So you guys check it out. We'll do a little tour of it and I'll show you how clean it is tomorrow. Guys, so we call them Hollywood. So, take manifold sensor. You guys, we've had a little bit of a trip getting here. Breakdowns, yeah. you know. So Chris is sitting here making this list of everything that they need to do when we get back to Charlotte to this truck. They gotta do it lickety split, right? Cause they got another race, gotta roll. And he says something like, ignore my chicken scratch, I'm left-handed. And I turned and I looked and I said, Southpaw. I am also left-handed. <laughs> and then we just laughed and laughed cause we realized that's why we get along so good. Couple of lefties. Lefties. <laughs> say about those JRM truck drivers. Now's your chance. Especially Hollywood. <laughs> Daryl, what happened to this cart? We gotta know. I didn't get it on film, but we gotta know. She took a little turn. Uh, we gotta overturn. Kind of, kind of went for a little ride out of the back? Yeah. Nothing important though, it was just a... Uh, I think it's the cooler full of water or something. Right. No biggie. <laughs> oh yeah. Car never made that good. Where's the car? We didn't forget it. They just figured out a way to tie it down to make it a pain in the get it so they can get it. So I just checked in real quick with the with the primary guys, they're unloading each of our four cars, as you saw them riding there. And whoever loaded the eight car, they did something weird. Something totally different, and you can't get the hooks out anyway. So 
they're not very happy. Primary guys are upset. I can say that. I can confirm they're not happy. So we'll get the other three on car cars unloaded and see what happens. I can tell the moods guard are getting a little, 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 little because uh, of this car that wouldn't come out and they can't get a hold of anybody on the race team because I'm gonna quote the primary drivers. The race team is too busy posting TikToks from their trip. I wish they'd pick up their phones and tell us what they did to this car so we can get it unloaded, unquote. We're getting there. So all this equipment that you see rolling off the trucks is coming in here at New Hampshire, at Loudoun. Got a garage here, see? All the trips that I've made in the past, they actually haven't had a garage. It's been kind of working underneath the shade of the hauler trailer or whatever. Um, this is the first time that we've wheeled, that I've been around, that we've loaded, pushed stuff into a garage. So typically at the places they let the Xfinity series, which is us, kind of languish. I shouldn't say typically. The races that I've been to, we languish in the sun while the cup drivers and cup teams all get to use their magical garages. But here at New Hampshire, we got a garage, and it's even insulated from the heat. So, so, we're here for a little report about the car, why the car will not come off. Now that we've calmed down a little, and we're not quite as still angry, <laughs> even a little more calm. Inside, I'm gonna use my inside voice. Okay, inside voice. Because <laughs> so we load this thing every week. I mean, we race after race. Same thing, but they went usually go through the truck arms to try and strap it down. So this time they went through the wheel. Problem is when you go through a wheel, you got all the brake duct, you got the rotor, uh -huh. everything in the way, and you can't get a oblong hook through a round spoke of the wheel, so it's not coming out either way through the back, through the back side, or through the front side of the wheel. And you're so just moments just, away from cutting the straps. Yeah, we're gonna cut the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not, not safer than what I was going to say. <laughs> it's, uh, on one hand, it's like, it's a small thing, right? But on the other hand, what these hauler drivers do is, it's important, like, this is our duty. So we got here yesterday afternoon, got the truck washed, and then we kind of waited. And it's like, okay, now we're back on it. Like, we're doing our duty, and we can't do our duty when we can't unload the car. And then if the race team gets here and the car's not unloaded, naturally, they'll be frustrated because they can't do their job properly. You know, now they're on the clock. It's your turn, race team, to hammer down while we, you know, we kind of help with what we can here, you know, around the trailer. But here in a, in a little bit, it's going to be their time to jam and the car is going to be sitting on the hauler and they're going to be naturally wondering. So, good news. The car is unloaded. All is well. Kumbaya. Everyone's good. Let's go see what old Hollywood's up to. He's been hanging out with his doors closed in the hauler here. Something. Been looking for you. What are you whoa, doing? Whoa, 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 cut that off. What do you mean, cut it off? Because I'm, I'm cutting up some strawberries here, and well, my wife, she does all the cooking at home. Well, I mean, I do the stuff on the grill, but she does everything in the kitchen. And I can't let her know I know how to <laughs> cut up this stuff. Wait, how, you've been married how many years? 28. And she all this time doesn't know about this. Well, well, the secret's out now. Honey, I love you. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. <laughs> well, we got Hollywood here. A little earlier, got all the sequence of all the trucks rolling in. Uh, getting the trucks parked is very, they're very particular. It's not just like, yeah, wheel in there, you're close enough. I mean, it is to the T exact. What's your thoughts on parking? I mean, so, um, Obviously, you don't want to screw up, but you definitely don't want to screw up when you got uh, Chris watching you or you got Woody on the other side watching you or Jeff. And, um, uh, and those guys are, you know, I mean, they got more time in this garage area backing up than I do going forward. So um, now, I've noticed when guys come in, there's some guys that they go in and they time their corner and everything just right to where they pull through, pull forward, back in, and that's it. So uh, some of them are uh, some of them are real impressive. Chris is real impressive. Jeff is real impressive. Um, sorry, Adam, but you know he seems to struggle some. 
and um, and I struggle uh, occasionally. But today, but today I hit it, money. And you but, were the first guy in. But I was the first guy in, and. I happened to look over and I noticed she was videoing and filming, and so you know, that put the pressure on, and I love but pressure. You and you so, um, so that part of it was good today. Now we can talk about it. About Hollywood put it right on the money, yep. and um, and I have uh, done that a few other times, but uh, and I have struggled several times doing it. But you nailed it today. But I nailed it today, and. Uh, Anybody watching this or sees trucks backing up the docks and that sort of stuff, it, it's tough. You miss it by a foot, uh, can make the difference of backing up three or four times to get it over at foot because it's, it's so difficult to move over just a foot when yeah. you don't have a lot of room on both sides. Right. So to all you truckers out there and people watching these videos, listen, we're just going to keep having a blast and you guys keep watching. <laughs> No, he nailed it the first time today because he had his co-driver in there coaching him. You were back there in the door. sleeper telling him what's uh, going on? I, I was just, in the front don't seat. Don't be telling my I secrets, I was telling girl. him how to get in there. <laughs> Ladies, if you're looking, be single, got plenty of money, <laughs> ready to mingle, no, baby. Look at him. Look at this guy. He is the package. <laughs> All right, so... We're heading over with these can. So we got a, what are we doing? We're gonna go over here and just get about seven gallons from each can, just to get us through practice. And okay. Check. So they gotta like, uh, they have to inspect the cans, right? Yeah, over here they want to inspect. So we'll take them, them in, they wanna make sure they're all good and square and the way they're supposed to be, so. We'll inspect them, we'll throw a little fuel in the mule, and then we'll uh, take the old wagon back. He, he saw you hiding or something already. I could I helped pull that. He didn't even didn't even look at me. He just went right. We had you, man. We were gonna get you. Hey! Woo! Ooh, that's a bad bassoon. So they got a little loose in practice. Spun, hit the wall and totaled the car basically meaning that it's not fit to race anymore too much damage that's why they bring backup cars you bring two cars in your hauler uh now these, these guys behind me back here they've got to swap tons of stuff uh fuel cell and some control components and stuff from one car to the to the backup car from primary to backup Ugh, so it makes it makes a day that's tough get a lot tougher these guys will be out here hammering on this until the garage closes probably get in a little early tomorrow and then try to get it finished up race ready and then on top of that they're essentially punished by having to go to the back of the pack because they won't get a chance to qualify and they're in the backup car and all that so they have a huge uphill climb but that's part of racing
got stuck in a big traffic jam this morning. So we were hustling trying to get up there. We were the last ones to get to the track, scrambling to get the ice out, get all the drinks cooled down. Really hot, really humid here today at the track. Everyone's sweating a lot, especially the people with lots of hair, really sweating a lot. Anyway, we got everything taken care of, got everything squared away, all is well. Trucker duties are complete for a moment. Pretty quick, we're gonna have to get our suits on. All the primary drivers, just to remind you, all the primary drivers do fuel cans for their race teams. I'm gonna try to get a suit on again and catch cans if we have a fire suit. It's gonna be a roast and scorcher. We qualified position three, so we're all really hopeful. We really need to win on the number 18. We're really crossing our fingers. My goodness it's hot in the old long sleeve and the fire suit and I only had to catch one can it's a tough break tough race tough break really is hoping to hoping to we're always hoping to catch victory lane of course every race that's what your hope is but it has eluded us once more I'm gonna change out of my clothes out of my Ski gear, I feel like I'm going snowboarding or something in Montana. Change out of my long sleeves and such, and then uh, help old Christus, old Mr. Chris, get things ready and rolling. Got a long old shift tonight. Long old drive. Feeling good though. Feeling real good. All right, y'all. Well, that's gonna do it. I hope you enjoyed. Appreciate the support. It's been fun. Uh, been fun popping these things out. That was the New Hampshire experience. We just got back to the shop here with the number eight hauler here in Mooresville from way up in New Hampshire. The Overnight Express truck ran good on the way down. We're gonna get it in the shop tomorrow. So then get the EGR system cleared out, cleaned out. All will be well. Hopefully for the old Pete for the rest of the season. You guys. Until next time. Catch you later.